Hello and welcome to today's solar plexus chakra yoga class. The solar plexus chakra is kind of your power center. So this is a place that is kind of synonymous with the ego, um, wanting to feel in control and in charge of your life. So today we are going to be doing a lot of really powerful poses, things that really open up this center for us and activate this chakra, some balancing postures, just to ignite the fire and the heat in our core. So you don't really need any props, but you might need a yoga strap and a block so get your props together and I will meet you on the mat. So to get started we're going to be doing some Uddiyana Bandha or stomach vacuums. So um, for this you might need a yoga block to sit on. Um, it's, it's a move that some people just instinctively know how to do. Um, it is a little complicated if you don't know how to do it. It's beyond the scope of this class to really explain it in detail, but you can give it a go and if it doesn't work for you, you can just practice deep belly breathing. So I've rolled my pants down so you can really see exactly what my belly's doing. And you wanna kind of sit in almost like a half, a half lotus, just a comfortable seated position. And what we're gonna do is lean slightly forward. We're gonna inhale, fill our lungs with air, exhale completely, and without taking in any more air, we're going to perform an abdominal lock, okay? Um, also known as a stomach vacuum. So you suck in the stomach and expand the rib cage. All right, so it looks like this. Inhale. Exhale completely. I release the lock first and then I take a nice deep breath in. So if you manage to get that, you can go ahead and do another set or you can try and perform some Nauli Kriya with me. So this is kind of an internal massage for your organs. Um, again, a bit complicated to explain if you've never done it before. So either do another set of what we've just done or deep belly breathing. Otherwise, with Nauli, you perform the stomach vacuum, but then you pop out your rectus abdominal muscles and you do a kind of circular body wave, moving the muscles from one side to the other. So we're gonna do one round going one way and then the other way, and then we are done. All right, so inhale, exhale completely. Inhale, exhale. And there we go. All right, so Nauli Kriya is really, really fantastic for internal organ health. Best not performed on a full stomach. So if you are interested in learning more about this and you'd like a video on this, then do let me know in the comments and I'll try and put something together. All right, so let's get started now that we've massaged our solar plexus area. We're gonna start with a lotus pose. So I'm going to put my left foot up first into the hip crease and then the right foot. All right, and then we're going to alternate between um, a hip lift to really ignite our core and then a forward fold. So if you want, you can grab two blocks and place them beneath your hands. That's gonna help you get a little bit more height, which will make it easier to lift your hips. Otherwise, you can just press your hands into the floor. Inhale, exhale, lift up. Suck those knees up, suck the hips up. Hold it there. Lower down, inhale, exhale, forward fold. And again, walk yourself back. Inhale, exhale, lift up. Hold it there, get your balance. Lift the knees up, lift the hips up, push down. Inhale, exhale, forward fold. Let's do one more set. Inhale, exhale, lift up. Ignite that core, lift the knees up, hold it there. Come down and exhale, forward fold. You can hold it for a touch longer, your forward fold. 
and then coming up. All right, I'm gonna release my right foot. Now this is where you might need your strap, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like. With your left foot, make a small loop in your strap, your dressing rope tie, your belt, and you're just gonna place it over your ankle. All right, then you're gonna come back into this lotus shape, half lotus. The right leg stays extended along the mat. Now you really wanna try and make sure that you're pulling this foot all the way over so that your toes are easy to grab. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your opposite hand, reach around your back, and then you have to try to grab your toes. Now as you can see, my hand's a little far, so I just use this hand to pull this one round, and then I try and grab my big toe. So now that I've got it, I don't need my other hand. If you can't reach, you'll just use your strap, you'll grab wherever you can on your strap, and you'll hold it there, all right? Otherwise, you're holding onto your big toe, and then you're gonna inhale, arm up, exhale, forward fold. So reaching forward, try and press the shoulders away from the ears, kick your right foot out in front of you, extending through the heel, lots of activation through the left leg as well as the right leg. Just breathe and try and let go of any gripping in the muscles and just let everything release. One more deep breath in. And then coming up, all right. So now we're going to lift onto this leg and we're going to try and lift up into a boat position like so. All right, so again, you're gonna grab your big toe using maybe the help of your strap or your other arm. Once you've got it, I'm gonna just take my knee outwards. I'm gonna use a peace finger sign and grab onto my big toe. Get my balance onto my tailbone and then slowly lift my opposite leg up to the sky. What helps is to gently kick your toe into your fingers. So a slight pointing of the toe and then drop the shoulders down away from the ears and just feel the power in this pose. You can also feel for dropping the left knee down towards the mat, deepening the lotus position. So feel the power and control you need in the center of your body, right through the solar plexus there, which is kind of at the top where the diaphragm is, separating abdominal cavity from the lungs. Hold it there. Good, and then slowly release. All right, so you can take off the strap and put it onto your other foot. If you used it for one side, you'll probably need it for the other side. And let's do it all on the other side. So I've got my right foot this time and I'm reaching it into lotus as far over my hip crease as I can get. Already practice dropping the right knee down to the ground. Reaching the left hand back behind you. If you can't grab the toes, just use your other hand to kind of pull your arm over like a puppet and then grab the toes that way. Inhale, reach the left arm up tall and exhale, forward fold. Good, hold it there. Shoulders away from the ears, lengthening the spine, lowering the right knee down to the ground. And each inhale creates space. Each exhale melts into the space. Activation through the left leg and the left heel. One more deep breath in. Exhale. And coming up. All right, bending your right foot into the floor. Again, you're gonna reach the right arm down, grabbing the toe, using the help of the hand if you need to. Turning my leg out like a butterfly, reaching for my big toe. Get your balance onto your sit bones, and then slowly start to straighten the left leg. When you've got it into a boat position, gently push the big toe into the fingers of the left hand. Imagine you're wearing really long earrings and you don't want them to touch down onto your shoulders. Drop the shoulders, drop the right knee down. Feel really strong and powerful, like nothing could tip you over here. Take a moment, connect with your solar plexus. Feel its power and its strength. The ease with which you breathe. And then slowly release. Good, take a moment, lengthen both legs along the mat. Just shake it out. Good, okay.
From here, I want you to gently roll down onto the mat. And we're gonna practice what's known as a hollow body. So it's like you're doing a handstand. You want to reach your arms up far away from you. So this is the opposite of what we normally do. This time, we want the shoulders to hug up to the ears. Then you want to take any curve out of the lower back. So you're almost trying to push your lower back into the mat. As you do that, you feel that the legs want to lift up off the ground to really get the lower back into the ground. The hands are also hovered just off the ground. This is your low hover or hollow body position. Inhale and exhale. I want you to tuck your knees in towards your forehead. <sighs> Inhale back to hollow body. And exhale back to tuck. <sighs> and again. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And last one. Inhale, exhale. And inhale, exhale. Good. Okay, we're gonna do what is known as the Pilates single leg stretch. It's also a bit of a, a scissor motion with the legs. So you're gonna have your hands supporting the weight of your, your head come up into a half crunch. You're gonna extend the legs into that same hollow body position. Right leg comes up, you're gonna do pulse, pulse change. Pulse, pulse change. Keep going. Stay in that crunch position. Shoulder blades just touching the mat. Nice hollow body, so rounding lower back into the mat. It's a controlled movement with the kick, so you're not swinging the legs going wild using momentum. You can make the kick bigger as you go along. One more each side. And good, and come down, good. Just hug your knees into a chest, rock side to side for a moment, just to release all that tension and pressure that's built up in the, in the abdomen. And then take your hands beneath your knees and we're just gonna gently roll forward and back. So you can sort of take this to wherever feels comfortable. And then you wanna see if you can eventually come all the way into a squat position. Good, hold it there. Just take a moment to feel your squat, rock out the hips and the knees. Good. And then we're just gonna slowly straighten and roll up into standing. All right, we're just gonna do a couple of sun salutations just to warm up the body and increase the heat in our solar plexus area. So you're gonna inhale, arms, Above the head, reach up tall. Exhale, dive forward into a forward fold. If your knees are bent for now, that's perfectly fine. Exhale, halfway lift. Step back or hop back into a plank. And then you can do knees, chest, chin, chaturanga. Inhale into a cobra. Exhale, push back into downward dog. Good, and then looking forward, rise up onto the toes, hop or step forward through the hands, halfway lift, exhale, forward fold. <sighs> Inhale, rolling up, arms come up, arms come into prayer. <sighs> One more, just like that, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. <sighs> Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, hop or step back, into your chaturanga. Exhale, you can do an upward dog this time. Exhale, down dog. And hold your down dog, walk it out. Just pedal through the feet. So maybe this is your first down dog for the day. Take it easy. Good, and then you're gonna find your left leg, reach it up towards the sky for down dog splits. Push the floor away from you. Try and square off the hips. Good. And then you're gonna bring the foot into between the hands. 
and you're gonna come into a crescent high lunge. So you've got your back heel lifted and the back leg is straight, you're bending nice and low, so you're feeling a nice stretch through the right hip. You can really flex into the right um, glute. Good. And then you're gonna, in one quick move, you're gonna push forward and come into a warrior three. If it's too much to have your arms up next to your ears, you can take the arms next to the hips, but we wanna feel for rolling the right hip down towards the ground. Good. And let's step back into our crescent warrior. Just twist into a twisted warrior. So I've got my left leg forward and my right arm. And then bringing that right hand down for a twisted lunge. Good. Look in front of you. You're gonna step forward, get the weight into the hands, and then you're gonna lift up the back leg for your revolved triangle. All right, you can have your hand on the floor. You could have your hand on a block. You could also just hover the hand. We're trying to internally rotate the right leg down, but keep it lifting up and then revolve to face the ceiling if you can. Push the floor away from you if your hand is down. And then cartwheel the left hand forward. You're in a standing split. So from here, see if you can drop your body down to meet your shin. Really extend the top leg, push it backwards as much as you can. Good. Maybe you can reach behind your left calf with the left hand and pull the body closer. Good. Bring the hands back in front of you and let's just do three shiver squats. So we're taking right knee, we're bending it and tucking it behind the left knee, like you're about to sit down. One, two, Last one, three, good. And then let's just come back into that crescent high lunge. We're gonna straighten up both legs, rise up onto the back tippy toes, lengthen the spine and reach forward into a tabletop or an extended triangle. So I've got my nice square hips, reaching my arms forward and then slowly down, far in front of my leg. Now, lean the weight forward, but take the hands back, all right? Focus on your back leg, your right leg. You're gonna bend into it, but keep on your high heel shoe. You're still on your tippy toes. Now, straighten back leg, bend it. So it's kind of a weird lunge, like a reverse lunge in a way. Good. Let's do one more here. Hold it there, drop fingertips to the floor. Really push the fingertips into the floor your core like we did with those lotus hip lifts in the beginning and see if you can bring your hands further back towards the back foot lean the weight into the hands suck up your core and see if you can lift up the back toes hold it just for a moment come down good and then come back into your extended triangle good and then hands come down all right so that same position that we've just done with the foot hugging in we're going to be doing it as kind of like a standing wind removing pose. So bend into the back leg, push the weight forward and kick your heel in towards your glutes. If you do need to be up on some blocks to help you, then go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we're in a kind of a reverse wind removing pose. So you've got your hands on the floor, you're in a forward fold. You are not lifting the knee away from you. Knee stays tucked in towards the chest Heel is close to the bum. Now see if you can reach back with one hand and maybe both hands and see if you can balance there. Good, hold it there. Lock out the left knee, balance. Good, now you're gonna drop just the left hand and you're gonna extend by kicking into the right hand. Good. Now we're gonna reverse that, so bring it back. Get both hands together and swap. So we're doing the standing tiger pose now. So kick back into the left hand this time. Good, push down, the weight is into the right hand and the left foot. Arch the spine, kick up, kick, kick, kick. 
Good, and then bring both hands down, standing splits. Good, okay, to switch legs, you're gonna bend into this left leg, give it a break, and we're gonna do a little scissor kick to change. Nice and light, if this doesn't work for you, just go into a down dog and hold your down dog. Let's do two more like this. Kicking the legs in the air. Good, if you want, you can play around with it. Just getting the weight into the hands and ending on a down dog splits with the right leg up. Good, now we do everything on the right side. So bringing the right knee forward and coming into your crescent lunge. Good, so you're rising up nice and high on the back toes, so you're wearing a high heel shoe. And then in one fell swoop, you're gonna lift forward into warrior three. Internally rotating the left hip down. If this is too much, hands come back behind the hips. Good, otherwise they're up in front of you. Coming back into your crescent high lunge and then twisting into your twisted warrior. Good. So you've got right foot forward, left arm. Reaching down for a twisted lunge. This is kind of your active rest in this position. Strong sequence. And now again, like we stepped forward for warrior three, you're gonna step forward for revolved triangle. All right, so if you need to have a block underneath your hand, you do that. You're trying to internally rotate the left hip down as you revolve your rib cage up to the right. And then cartwheel the hands down for standing splits. So taking your right hand whoo, to the back of your right shin and just hugging your body closer and then pushing that left leg up towards the ceiling into your standing splits if you can. Wherever you're at is where you're at. Right, releasing that and let's go into our shiver squats. So, hugging the knees one behind the other for one, for two, inhale, exhale for three, good, and then back into that crescent high lunge, take a moment. All right, from there, extending both legs, we're still rising up high onto the back foot, so the heel is lifted, this helps us square our hips. Lifting up tall, we're going to reach forward, for a tabletop. Active through both legs, so really pulling up on my right kneecap. See if you can come even lower, lean the weight forward, reach the spine straight and long, fingertips far away from you. Then take the hands back behind you. Get your balance, rise up onto back toes and bend back knee for a squat. One, let's do four of these. Two, good, three, and you're gonna hold number four, hold it there, good. Pressing fingertips back behind you into the floor, push down into the floor, see if you can lift up the back leg. Toes into bum, hold it there, good, coming down, good, and let's step forward, keeping that connection between the heel and the bum. Good, so upside down when removing pose, reaching back for one foot, Maybe you can get the other foot. You're trying to keep your supporting legs straight, so it's a balanced pose. And if you are not balancing today, don't worry about it. Wherever you're at is where you're at. Good. Now you're gonna release just the right hand. You're gonna kick up, kick, kick, kick. Left hand, left foot into left hand. Kick the floor away from you. Bring it back changing sides, so swapping out the hands, standing tiger pose, kick hand into opposite foot, foot into hand for tiger pose, arching the spine, using the strength and power of the legs, feel powerful here, good, kick it up, one last time, release, and standing splits, good, bend into the right leg, we're going to do those hop switches again, so just Start out nice and small. Get your legs used to the movement. And then, as you do get used to it, the weight goes into the hands, the feet become nice and light, and you swap. Good. Let's do one more each side. 
Good, and then into your downward facing dog. Come forward into plank and down all the way to the mat. Good, okay. So now we're gonna work on our spine strengthening from here. So we're in this position known as Sphinx, but we're not collapsed into the shoulders like we would be on the beach. So you wanna push the floor away from you and hover the elbows just off the ground. Now notice I don't have my elbows out. I've got hands in line with elbows, in line with shoulders, everything is parallel. Active through the legs, squeeze the glutes at the back, hover those elbows. Don't poke your chin forward, just look between your hands to lengthen the back of the neck. We're gonna inhale, roll the hands out. I'm gonna just move my mic. And exhale, roll it back up to Sphinx. Inhale, roll it out. Exhale, roll it in. Don't climb it in, all right? Wherever you get to as you drag yourself back to Sphinx is where you get to. If you're on a sticky mat like mine, it might not be as easy to lift up. So you might want to take some of your mat away. In fact, I'll do that. Good. So inhale down and exhale, rolling up into Sphinx. I've got my elbows hovered. Inhale down. Exhale, roll it up. All right, now you're gonna find your Sphinx pose. I'm gonna put my mat back. So you're in your Sphinx pose, and I want you to find your left leg and lift it up, and your right arm. So it's a bird dog. See if you can still maintain that dragging sensation in the left arm. Let's change sides. Good. Again, and again, nice. Okay, so from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our right hand behind us and we're just gonna rotate the elbow up to the ceiling and come down again. Rotate and down, rotate and down and up last time and down good let's change sides so really push the floor away from you make your right arm very active into the mat and lift left elbow up and down and up and down and up and down last time up and down. Okay, we're going to come up onto a forearm plank, so pushing the floor away from you, and we're going to lift right leg and hold it. Good. Straighten that leg, lower the hips, push the floor away from you. Change, lift left leg. Hold it there. Strong in the solar plexus. Lower down, widen the feet, and now we're going to lift right arm hold it there change sides left arm keep your left arm lifted lift the right leg bird dog and change other side right arm left leg good and come down again all right let's keep working that spine so even though the spine is at the back of us, the area that we're working on, the middle spine, is directly behind our solar plexus. So we really want to focus on that middle back, kind of where the, the bra strap is. All right, so let's do boat. So with boat, we're going to clasp our fingertips behind us, interlace them, squeeze hands, palms together. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, lift just the body up. Pull the arms straight behind you. Go for length. So reach the crown of the head far away from the fingertips. 
feel light and buoyant so you're not completely exhaling the air in your lungs. 80-20 breathing. And come down. Let's do just the legs. So you can have you can look forward, you can have your forehead into the mat, whatever you prefer. You're gonna inhale and exhale, lift just the legs. Hold it there. Trying to straighten out the knees as much as you can. And lower it down. All right, let's combine the two. Trying to keep the legs together if possible. Reaching for fingers behind you, clasp hands, palms, squeeze them together. Inhale, exhale, inhale, boat. 80 20 breathing, lock out the knees, lift up tall, struggle harder, and slowly low down. Good. All right, let's do bow pose now. So we're gonna grab the, the feet behind us. So whichever way is comfortable. Some people prefer to have, the, to grip from the pinky toe towards the big toe. I prefer from the big toe towards the pinky toe. It really just depends on your shoulder mobility. So I prefer this way, but you're welcome to do any way that you prefer. You're gonna inhale, exhale, and inhale, lifting up. So the more you kick, the higher the legs go, the more you're working the, the leg strength to support the spine instead of it being all the work in the spine. Good. Kick. Feel the pecs open. Feel your solar plexus on the floor supporting you. And slowly lower down. Really, really good. All right. We're building up to a camel here, but it's a bit of a variation on a camel. So in order to prepare you for that, we're gonna do a half frog. So you're gonna come up onto your elbows, bend the right leg, reach back, grab the foot. Now, you may or may not be able to do this, but we want the fingers to face forward like the feet. And we're gonna try and push the toes down to the floor. You can slightly kick back into your hands so that you really feel a good quad stretch. But go easy here, 20% effort. And then release, see if you can drop those toes down more. And again, exhale, resist your foot into your hand. Release. And let's change sides. If you can't get your foot all the way down, just go to wherever you can. So fingers face forward like the toes. Inhale, push that foot down. Exhale, resist the foot back up. Gentle, gentle kick up into the hand. 20% effort is good enough. Inhale, release and see if you can squeeze those toes closer to the floor. Exhale, kick back. Froggy. Inhale, release. Exhale, kick. Inhale, release completely. All right, so we're gonna come into a camel now. So if you have sensitive knees, you might want to roll up your mat um, and get some additional cushioning underneath your knees. So you can go for a traditional camel, which starts with hands pressing into the lower spine, fingers reaching down, push the hips forward. When you can't go back anymore, you drop the head and you reach for one heel and then the other. And then to reverse, hands come back into the back. Keep the head dropped back and bring the spine, your red tail comes up last. So you can go ahead and do one to two sets of camel. If you would like to try this variation, then we're going to do that same froggy position where you bring your foot up towards the hip. All right, so you really have to squeeze it in quite tightly and this is where you might need some padding under your knees. And then you're gonna push the hips forward, push the foot forward, and you're going to start to reach back and see if you can find your heel. You can also place a block besides your heel and reach back for the block if you would like to try this pose, but it feels uncomfortable in the lower back. So mostly we don't wanna crunch in the lower back. We wanna think about lifting up in order to go back, and then you find your heel, and then 
release into your camera. Keep pushing that foot forward. Keep opening the heart. And then slowly, again, head comes up last and then you release the foot. All right, so I'm gonna face the back as I do my other side. So I'm gonna bend up my left leg this time and I'm pushing my fingers forward like the toes to really hug it in there. Lifting up to go back. I can still press my hand into my lower back to support. Reach down along the back of the thigh and then to the shin so that I can feel where my heel is and then drop into the camel. Gently lift my head up and when I've got my balance, I release the foot. Good, well done. All right. So let's start winding down. That was a really strong class. Well done to you. All right, so from here we're gonna go into a half tortoise. So you're sitting back onto your heels. You're gonna lift your arms up. You're gonna interlace just the thumbs and then close the rest of the hands. So feel for the knife edge by your pinky side of your hand. That part is gonna to touch down to the mat. Inhale, lift tall, exhale, lean forward, hinge at the hips. You want to try and get your forehead to touch down before your pinkies. So see if you can get that. Touch the forehead down and then the pinkies come down. And then settle onto your hips. Good. From there, see if you can really walk your pinkies away from you, stretching out the sides of the body. Lean the weight back into the heels so that you've got a bit of traction Hands stretching up, hips stretching down. Just releasing the spine from the deep camel back bend. Good. Breathe. And then from there, you're going to just release the hands and you're going to clasp them behind your back. Just like we did for boat, extend the arms. See if you can squeeze hands, palms together. Now you've got your forehead on the floor. I want you to see if you can get more of the top of your head and then we're gonna lift the hips and roll onto the crown of the head for rabbit. Good. So if you, this makes you uncomfortable and you feel like you might somersault forward, keep pulling the hands up to the ceiling. That's gonna help keep you light and keep the weight off your head. Push the tops of the feet into the mat. Suck in the stomach. Look at your solar plexus. And slowly lower the hips. Release the hands. And roll up. All right. Let's go into a thread the needle. So I like to have my toes together, my knees open a little wider. Lifting my left arm up to the ceiling and then threading it underneath the right arm and pushing the floor away from me. Upper back twist, a really, really nice one, just to release the spine. And let's do the other side. So press left hand into the mat below your face, lift right hand up to the ceiling. Open the ribcage and then thread the needle. Readjust that top hand, push the floor away from you. Upper back twist. Good, replace the hands. You're gonna come down. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take my left arm out to the side and I'm going to roll over so it's 90 degrees in line with my shoulder, not up high or low, just in line with my shoulder. Roll onto your side, using your hand for support, your right hand for support. You can either stay there or you can reach the right leg back. Maybe you can even stand onto both feet. And maybe this is enough for you. You can try extend one leg, maybe both legs, 
see how that feels. If you want, you can try and grab hold and balance. And then slowly reverse all of that and change sides. So rolling onto your right side, stacking the hips over the right. Maybe you hold it there. Maybe you bring your, your left leg over. Maybe your right leg as well. Rounding into the floor. If you've got that, you can try and extend one leg and the other. If you've got your balance, you can reach for the big toe of the opposite leg. Hold it there. And then slowly reverse. You're just gonna lie down, taking Savasana on your stomach this time, really feeling solar plexus into the mat. Rest your forehead onto your hands and just feel the breathing, the belly rise and fall, pressing into the mat and away. Congratulate yourself for your effort, for showing up today and doing your very best despite the difficulties and the uncertainties of some of these new challenging poses. So just take a moment to pat yourself on the back. Stay here for as long as you like. You're also welcome to roll onto your back for your final shavasana. I've so enjoyed practicing with you today and I hope you've enjoyed the solar plexus chakra yoga class. I will see you in the next one. Namaste.